For anyone who's ever wanted a peek at what went on behind the scenes of the Photon television show, today I'm talking with actor David Stay, who played Mandar on the series, to hear the stories behind his personal photo collection. Hi, David. Hey, now. All right, we have some amazing photos to take a look at, and you're going to give us the inside scoop. First of all, you've got some amazing photos of the entire cast and crew. So we're looking right now at the whole crew. Tell me who's who, what's the scoop, what are we looking at? Okay, we're going to start from left to right. Uh, The first guy standing, he uh, was one of the production assistants. The guy kneeling and the guy standing above him, they were our sound guys. Then you got Takahashi with the cowboy hat hat on. He was our uh, special effects guy. Then you got one of the directors of photography, the director of photography with the white hat on there, Coop. That guy peeking over the camera there right next to him, he was a great guy. He was part of the sound team and the camera team. That's Mac Massimoli holding the sign, my brother from another mother. Now, the little guy, that was my agent, Leo Leonard. Then right next to him, another production assistant behind him, a production assistant, another production assistant, peeking out right there, Jim Carrington, the man himself. Above him, you got one of our character players, more production assistants. You got a stunt girl right there. You got an executive right there. Then you got Bodie Lee. There he is. Look at that guy. Look at that shot of him. Great. Look at Tivia, man. She looks cool. Look at him. Badass. It's me. I got a big, goofy smile on my face. The head right above Bodie. All right, this is the guy we were talking about. So I couldn't remember his name. I messed with all the time. Another production assistant. More production assistants, I guess. Uh, one of the character players right there. There's Chitsuda. Right above the guy with the glasses on the far left. Next to Kahashi with a cowboy hat on right there. Chitsuda. Our makeup girl, she did my face every day and took it off every night. Uh, another guy right there, young lady, sweet girl, uh, had something to do with the scripts. And there's Mickey and the guy above her. Both of them were the prop people. And I loved Mickey, but she was so shy. And then you got up to the top left here, that guy with the glasses on, another production says I messed with him too. We had a lot of fun. And a whole bunch more people. And there we all are, about two weeks into the beginning of Photon. Yeah, man. Oh a lot yeah. of people That's... involved with this production. Oh, yeah. Every day. It was a great time. Very good. All right, what's next? All right. What's next? Here we go. So we've got another photo. It looks like it's just the cast members. Yeah, just us. Everybody, the guys in the costumes. Well, actually... The guy on the right there between Bodie and Bay then, that was the the fight and stunt court coordinator. So he's the only one who wasn't one of the actors. Everybody else was somebody with a mask at some point? The Leon, the Pike, right. the warrior? He, he, yeah, he's the only one. And look at Tibia punching, what's his face? Punch him in the head. See her? Uh, <laughs> you didn't notice that, did you? I did not. No, I didn't either, so I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's punching him in the face. That's how we felt about him. Pyro. Oh, uh, little <laughs> subject to the photo. <laughs> Look at Chris, man. Look at that pose. He's got which puts his face, his head on, in his hands. <laughs> you guys had too much fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right, next. All right. Now, moving on. I see something that is kind of interesting. Now, most of the production crew, it looks like, had blue jackets, but you and Graham had red ones. So I'm curious, were the red jackets maybe specifically given to the actors, or did just did that maybe just fall out by chance? No, you know when you go to a wedding and they ask you if you want fish or meat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want blue or you want red? Huh. I think Graham <laughs> wanted the blue and he got the red, so order the meat, get the fish. <laughs> Oh, really? Is that, did he tell you that? He did. He ended up with the red one, and he thought it was a little bright. Now, moving on, though, um, we've got some production team members and a couple of familiar faces. All right, next. Are we next? Yeah, that's Takahashi. That's the, 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 the special effects guy. He did everything, built everything, built all the miniatures, all the puppets, all the everything, costumes. That's the man. All right, and what was interesting is we were going through some photos beforehand, and um, definitely then these guys were from the Artmic company, so Artmic doing all the special effects work, it sounds. And then there's a shot of Mandar making friends with somebody. Who's this producer? 
Tano, he's the guy I pointed out in the group photo. I said that guy was a great guy. He was part of the director of photography and assistant director. He's a great guy. All right, cool. Just a few random shots of some from some production guys. Now, there's one guy in particular. I know you told me he did a whole lot of things, just about everything backstage. Is that who we're looking at here in the mirror? Oh, behind? Oh, yeah. You mean the guy with the real long head next to Parcival? <laughs> That's right, in that uh, wacky mirror. Yeah. We had other production. We had like five or six production assistants. They just ran everywhere all the time. Taping things up, putting up blue screens, cardboard, and yeah, good guys. All right, same guy right there that's, with Chris Nero. No, that's a different guy. That's a different guy. You think it's you see? He doesn't have glasses on. I just went back. No, he doesn't. That's I told you. This is the guy. I can't remember his name. Okay, a few guys doing They're a whole lot. From another month. All right, now. Yeah. There's a scene with a bunch of people around a couple of tables. I know I see Jim Carrington in the back corner. What do you remember yeah, about these that folks? Was, that was our production room. That's Jim. Next to him is the director of photography. Uh, I don't know. There's a sound guy there, another sound guy. It's just everybody. Okay. Next. All right. The guy with the coffee maker. Yeah, production assistant. Another good guy. Loved him. Cool. Next. Then we've got Mr. a couple of guys party. hanging out with you at the rap party. Yeah, the rap party. We'll talk about the rap oh. party in a little bit more detail, but um, these were the production team, right? Yeah, more crew. The guy on the right always wore black. It was the Johnny Cash Yeah, yeah there's just another shot. A cool shot. Very good. We're looking at the ones with you in the shades? Yeah. I'm um, under the next one. That's one of our assistant camera guy. Mm -hmm. And more production crew, blah, blah, blah. And there we are again. Bam. All right. Well, we have us. quite the crew there. And moving on to some of the ladies who helped out with the props and the makeup. Looking at a woman here who is dressed like Tivia, but definitely not. And I understand she did double duty on the set. Tell me about this woman. Yeah, that's one of our stunt girls. She doubled for Tivia. And that's Chizura, Chizura right there. She's the makeup girl and, you know, costumes and everything else. Kept everything together. And there's my buddy. Oh, you know what? I think the first time you told me about this, I must have misunderstood. I almost thought that that stunt woman was also the makeup artist. But you're telling me that the uh, the makeup artist is the one next to her. Yeah. Oh, interesting. All right. And moving on beyond that. Well, that's that's the makeup artist again, yes, with the uh, with the words on the back of her jacket. Yes, when I was there, you know. The Japanese really liked a lot of Western culture, you know, young people. And I always thought of opening a side business where I would proofread the stuff that they wrote on there and their garments and their signs even. It was always misspelled or just not proper English. And I can't read what it says there, but if you read it, it's just kind of funky cold Medina. <laughs> I can't read it. Let me zoom in on this. Yeah, it'll give you perfect <laughs> Okay. It says, enjoyment of good sense in clothing, sending you strong individuality, dress up, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe not Shakespeare, but it's a good message. <laughs> yeah, it's good. There's me and Mickey. Look at that young lady there. Beautiful girl. Now tell me about this lady. I had a crush on her. She was just one of, but she was so shy. Didn't speak any English whatsoever. And I just got by. But she was just such a shy girl. But she was the sweetest thing. I had a lot of laughs with her. Now she was one of the prop masters, right? Yeah. All right. So that definitely explains the next shot with the wigs. Right. Yeah, there we are. Messing around. Next one, me and Tetsuda again at the wrap party. There's both of the prop people. 
And there's Vicky again in the prop room. Look at her with her with her little plastic apron on. Now let's pause for a moment here because I see in the background a lot of interesting props, and maybe we could just um, take a peek at a couple of these. I know you had a story about the dragons. Why don't we start there, up in that far right corner? Right. Well, they're in one of the episodes. They're puppets. And I, they were really cool. I really liked them. And their eyes lit up. And I asked Takahashi, you know, hey, when we're done, can I have one? He said, oh, no, no, no. We, we, you know, we can't. And at the end of shooting, I think it was like the last day, he came over to me, tapped me on the shoulder, he had a bag. And he, he gave me this sign. He said, here you go. And the head was in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So he gave it to me. It's still in my brother's basement in New York. Oh, amazing. Now, on, now on the top shelf there, that's the uh, the bad guy's place. That's the warrior bar. That's his place. Yes, which looks enormous on screen and clearly was not. Yep. Mickey's bigger than it. <laughs> oh, just about. And yeah. to the left of that, that red puppet-looking thing on the side, that would be the warlord? Oh, you know what? I think you're right. Yeah, there he is. There's his hand. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> I didn't. I, I was going to say, I don't know what that thing is. Yeah, I thought it was that's just, just scary. I thought it was, I just thought it was material. Wow, you found him. There he is. And there's, hey, look, there's a spaceship. There's everything there. It's a little bit of a Where's Waldo game. Come on. See what I want to look around a little more. It's just, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what those red things are hanging there. I don't know what that's from. <laughs> Oh, I do know what that's from, actually. That was a guy's necklace. The guy's necklace. Oh, the that's episode. right, from... The caveman guy, right? Yes! <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, see? Oh, All right, what's next? Oh. All right, next. All right, well, here's another Where's Waldo. We've got all the masks, it looks like. There what you go. Here? That's... Yeah, there they are. There's the heads. Now, it's interesting. I'm looking at two pike heads. How did that come into play? Did they swap those out? Well, one, I think the eyes and mouth and lit up and moved, and the other one was just stabilized, just when he didn't have to do anything but run around. Because oh. remember, they always had to have the guys, you know, doing the eyes and the mouth up the tears. But look, there's Randor's belt right there, bottom right. Cool beans. Yes, on the right. There it is. All right, next. All right. Now we've got one of the other men of R. That would be Pyrar before he gets up. There he is. So. That's the man with Chitura. That's my jacket right there, probably. The red one. jacket. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Well, it's definitely yours or Graham's. <laughs> right. And there's Pyrar. And Pyrar had a lot of makeup to go through, it looks like, because they made him green, and so he had to cover his whole face. I don't know, I guess. I never hung out when he was, you know, when he was, there was a, that was a, not a very big room. So most of the time, anybody else was in there, you weren't. It was a place to hang out. So, yeah, she just made them all up. Look at the size of his head. So, yeah, it was a big job. Very cool. There we are. There's Parchable, Eros, and his dad. First time I ever met him. So that's the a rap, rap party. party. Tell me about this rap party. Where was it, and what kind of an atmosphere are we talking about? You know, you know it was fantastic. It was beautiful. Probably in a hotel somewhere. And they actually, you know, we all got up and spoke. This footage is somewhere. I don't know where it is. But they actually did a music video to Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling. You are kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I always, I even told Max so many times, I need a copy of this. Then it was just, you know, Photon with uh, Dancing on the Ceiling. It was the coolest thing. And I'm, I really wish I had a copy of that. I really do. Oh my goodness. That would be something. That's one to scour YouTube for. Oh, forget it. I don't know whatever happened to it. Never say never. Were you expecting to see square one? You never know. That's right. (laughs) 
All right. So <laughs> first time you meet Eros' dad. Cool guy? Yeah, great guy. It was me and Graham. Graham and Tilia. Me and Parshival. Last time I ever saw... Oh, there we are. That's it. That the last photo ever taken of us together. That's a beautiful right photo. I mean, that, that just looks like a family picture. Yeah, we were a family. Oh, me and Tilia. There we are. The lovers. All right. Tell me about this photo. Things that make you go... We, hmm. we, <laughs> Loretta said, let's, let's, let's do something like a soap opera. And we did. And then look at Chris in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best photo bomb ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they weird. Have to, we're all laughing our asses off. And Jimmy says, let's, let's take something uh, romantic. Let's take like a, a, a romance novel cover. And there's Chris. <laughs> That's his... That's his uh, his response to it. <laughs> Boy, and they say a picture speaks a thousand words. I think this one says a little bit more. <laughs> there you go. Uh, too cool. That's that is definitely pictures. the best shot. That's one of my favorites. All right, cool beans. Okay. All right. There it is. There it is. Studio 9. No, it's really... Well, it was really cool on the set because they did. They had soap operas going on. I mean, you'd see people walking around in samurai suits, and it was cool, you know? It was being on, like, Warner Brothers and Lex except Japan. Now, something interesting about this whole studio setup is how you got around, and the next shot kind of gives us a sneak peek. Tell me about getting right. around this studio. Well, we had the moped. I mean, and it wasn't really getting around. It was just like... You know, when you get two hours to kill, you jump on the moped and ride around the studio. There's a bicycle there. You can go get your hair cut, you know. You just, when you had time to kill? Yeah. And then, of course, you know, if you had to go, you know, production people had to go around the set. You know, they grab one of the mopeds. What was the studio like? Pretty much like to see it, like any studio. You know, props everywhere and... Wood and all kinds, you know, anything you can imagine would be there. All right. The next shot is a view from the outside. Yeah, that's right outside our studio, looking out. Very cool. And we have Chris again. <laughs> there he is, my brother from another mother. Yeah, there we are. This is one of the on location shots, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember anything about where, when, how, what was going on here? It was on a beach. This is actually off the beach. The beach is, that's what they're looking at. Terry is looking at me. The co-star is looking at me. Yeah, we're right on the beach there. Okay, the one with all the rocks where uh, Friends and Enemies was shot. Because that guy there say? sold RD. Yes? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the guy that he, he, I don't know what happens to him. What does he do? He quits the Warriors of R or something? He gets thrown out. He gets thrown out. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, so we had a lot of pyrotechnics that day, which was cool. Where that's are you? me hanging. Hanging. I'm at a friend's house, a young lady. Her, she had a beach house. Or not even a house. It was just this little place on the beach. And it was cool. And we were just getting ready to go. I was waiting for her. Very nice. Now here's a great shot mm -hmm. of, of Tibia and Basin unmasked. Yeah, and she's sleeping. Yeah, we would sleep anywhere. <laughs> you were tired, man. I remember we were going. We were going on location. This is like I don't know what time in the morning. We probably were on set by five in the morning, five thirty, and this is us on the road. It was like four hours we drove. It was far away. Oh wow! But yeah, that's that's the route of sleeping. Okay, next, there we are partying. <laughs> This is the hotel we stayed in. We all had the whole play. We had a floor. Mm -hmm. The whole floor of us. 
We were drinking beers, sake, partying our heads off. Look at this. Hey, Graham. Wow, this is a great shot. This is one of the best shots. Absolutely. This one is truly bringing Mandar back to the light, quite literally. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You got the lighting guy and you got the, look at the soldiers in the background there. Oh, that's yes, a cool are. That's a cool shot, man. Those guys almost blended into the scenery, but boy, Mandar just jumps right out at you. Probably jumped right out at you, too. <laughs> Next. Uh, taking pictures of each other. I, I told you I have a shot. But it's a shot of three of us taking pictures of, of each other, taking pictures of each other. If I find it, I'll send it to you. I have it somewhere. Okay. Look at that shot of Tibia. Look at that. She's reaching for something. She's probably reaching for the, the, the or I don't know, it's just a great shot. That's acting. Can't see anything but her eyes. Look at her it's struggling to get to that sphere. Beautiful photo. Did you take that? Were you the photographer for that photo? I, I don't know. I have it. Somehow I have it. But then, you know, a lot of us took pictures. So I have pictures, you know, that are were given to me. Mm -hmm. That's a nice shot. And that's the end of the day right there. Look at Jim yawning. Well, everybody worked hard. Yeah, that was a long day. We were on the beach. It's hot. It's hot. Sandy. Ugh. And there I am on some kind of mountain. Oh, and there's the red jacket again. And there's the red jacket again. And there I am. I'm sleeping right there. I'm out. <laughs> Looks like somebody zapped Mandar. No, the good nap. There I am with the samurai sword. Now, right behind me, you see the one with me with the samurai sword? I do. Right behind me, that is Mount Fuji. That is too cool. That's cool, right? Absolutely. And actually, I have a picture of that, too, which when I find it, I'll send it to you. Wow. Yeah, that's stuff, man. All right, that's that. Carry on. Your buddy, Mac. Tell me about Mac Masamori. Mac Masamori. There he is, man. Look at him. Look at him in his sweats. His baseball cap. He was like the greatest guy. He really was. Yeah. Just a really good guy. He wanted me to stay in Japan. He was going to be my producer in Japan. But that was in my, uh, my goal. Didn't want to be famous in Japan, you know. But there he is. That's my guy. Now, the next picture. That's me and Max in the planning arts offices in Tokyo. And this is in 19, like, 90, 91, 92. He hooked me up with a gentleman by the name of Hisao Maru, who was a pretty big guy in Japan. He was kind of Steven Spielberg of Japan. And I got a gig. He wanted to have an international production company. So I ran the offices in, in here in the United States, and we had just Guillermo, who ran the European offices. And it's too long a story to go into, but it just didn't work out. The, the Japanese business, the, the Japanese business is completely different than European and, and Western business. They have a whole different concept of doing business and it just wouldn't work. We couldn't get anything off the ground. But anyway, I worked for planning arts for like two years and that's Matt. He's the one that he, he used to work for at Sato. And that's me and him and then planning arts offices. And yeah, I think that's in Shinjuku. And Mac had a huge role in Photon, right? Yeah, he was a man. <laughs> he, he was, you know, he was, he's what you would call the I guess, general manager, UPM, the unit production manager. You know, he oversaw everything. Yeah, that's my, my brother from another mother. Tell me about Jim Carrington. You no, know, Jim Carrington, a cool guy. He was the supervising director of all the actors. And uh, he, I, I directed three episodes because he was gone, because I became the assistant supervising director to him. So we had great times, me and him. I caught up with him here in California. 
Yeah, Jim was a good guy. Very cool. All right, we have some really cool photos here from a Halloween party. Tell me about this. Where were you and who are you with here? Well, that's Jim Carrington and a girl he was seeing at the time. And it was Halloween in Japan. And I asked the, I couldn't believe they let me do it. <laughs> but I asked her if I could wear Mandar out. And I don't know who had to approve it. I think Mac did. And that's the Hard Rock Cafe in Tokyo. Am I remembering, that? is this where you were a bartender? Yeah, I was the first American bartender in the Hard Rock Cafe. Very cool. That was a very cool time. And that place was so somber when I got there. It was just somber. There was a circular bar in the middle of the place. And it was all the Japanese were just sitting there. And the bartender was somber. And before I left there, uh, we were flipping bottles. And the whole place was partying. You always have a good time, don't you? Just the way it should have been. I couldn't believe it was so quiet, you know? And the bar was the center of the of, of, of the whole atmosphere. Then I turned one bartender around, the manager, the bar manager. He was a real somber guy. He already was the other guy. Me, him, and the bar manager. Anyway, that was the Hard Rock Cafe. Now, who was the young woman with the pink turtleneck in the photo with you? It was Yuri. That was my girlfriend at the time. She was actually a waitress at the Playboy Club. She's a Playboy bunny in the Playboy Club. Now, the guy who owns the Hard Rock Cafe, Tony Roma, the Playboy Club, all of those, he uh, he was a good friend of ours. He got us a place to live when we got there. And uh, Mr. Sumitani, very wealthy man, he hooked us up. We met him in New York, me and my buddy James. And James was going to Japan. So it was cool. That was Yuri. Not a great picture of her. Now, who are you hanging out with here? That was my best friend in Japan, Joe Nakai. That was the man with the plan. Me and him had a great time. That's Yotaro. That's where I learned to speak Japanese. Little mom and pa shop. Master and mama. That's what you call owners of a... Any type of restaurant, they're little, they're real tiny places. If they're husband and wife, you refer to them as master and mama. But that's where I learned to speak Japanese. You spend a lot of time there, I take it. Oh, yeah. See that bottle? Yes. That's a shochu bottle. And what you would do, you would go in, you get your bottle of shochu, your tea, and your glass, and your bucket of ice, and you'd make shochu, shochu and tea. And you would design the bottles. Any place you go to that you frequent, they give you the pens and you design the bottle. So whenever you come back, you always have a bottle there. And it's probably still there at Yotaro, that bottle. Very cool. So that's your artwork on the side that we're looking at? Oh, yeah, like on the side of the bottle. It was a dragon, like a dragon or a sea dragon or something. I don't know what it was. Very cool. Okay, the next shot. That's all of us out uh, after shooting one day. I don't know what I was thinking. Now, you were telling me this is the place that you learned a really interesting aspect of some Japanese culture at this restaurant? Can you... I did. I actually did. Yeah, the gentleman next to me, who's the director of photography, looks like Jim is lighting up a cigarette. He, uh, we're all out, and a young, that's just a young lady, maybe 20 years old, 21 years old. They're having a heated conversation. She starts crying. And he's really laying into her. And I started getting upset with him. And, you know, he just, uh, I, I thought it was terrible what he was doing with this girl. But I was pissed off at him. And I guess he spoke to Mac. And Mac came to me. He said, do you have any issues? And I told him. I said, yeah, what's wrong with this guy? And he explained to me, in Japanese culture, if you go out with your bosses, anybody, from work, you can say anything you want. You can say exactly how you feel to the boss, and it's supposed to be okay the next day. So that's the part of the Japanese culture that I find is fascinating. Now, that girl to the side, is that who you were speaking of? Yeah, that's her. That is actually her. Okay. That's the girl. Well, she came back with her scripts, so I guess all was cool. 
Yeah, she was a script girl. I'm pretty sure. She did a lot of, they all did a couple of things, you know. Okay, the next one, that's just us out. Um, about. See that sweater I'm wearing? Mm -hmm. I still have that sweater. Huh. And what did you have over mm -hmm. the sweater? Mm -hmm. It's a Japanese robe. That's in a hotel. Mm -hmm. On location again, somewhere. Right. No, that has to be low. See, you can still see the dark in my eyes. My eyes are always dark. My eyeglasses is the makeup. All right. So I see a few photos from a traditional Japanese dinner. Where did these dinners take place? What were they like? Well, it's just, you know, it's like a hotel. It's ballrooms. And, uh, you know, the whole crew, we all eat. And that's how you eat in Japan, on the floor. Oh, that's fun location. And then we'd go out. Like the other pictures you saw, we all went out. Yeah, sometimes we go out. And then we're all on the floor in those pictures, too. And nobody's sitting. And then he shoots at what's eggs. Even in my home, where I live, my living room, I actually had the coolest table in the world. There's no central heat in Japan huh. and in the old houses. And it was a table. It was a heating table. It was a beautiful thing. And there was a heater under the table, and you threw, you know, the quilt over the table, and you put a table on top of it, and you put your legs underneath the table to stay warm in the winter. Huh. It was a real cool table. That's interesting. No, we did everything Japanese style. I had no chairs in my place. We actually had, we, we actually did have uh, car seats. We found these car seats. Car seats? Yeah. That's oh. the only thing we had in the living room. Other than that, it was just, everything was low. Every, all the tables are low. Everything's done down down on the ground. Very cool. Yeah, you saw the pictures in my bedroom. You know, you sleep on a futon on the floor. Hmm. It's all, like my buddy Joe. His family, this is him, his wife, and his two kids at the time, they all sleep in one room on the floor. That's got to be quite the culture shock going over there and experiencing that. You were just immersed in it. Yeah, it was fantastic. Huh. Yeah, I even jumped. I heard there was an opportunity. I went for it. But see, the cool thing about it was Mr. Sumitani that we met in New York. He hooked us up with who would think we were millionaires. But it was one of the employees of his corporation, and his mother had a tenant upstairs that uh, died, and they needed to fill the place. And it was costing us like 1000 a month for something that would cost 10000 a month. It was actually the whole top floor of a house. My living room was bigger than Joe's whole, whole apartment. That's how fantastic it was. Wow. So we really, we, really looked, we really looked out in that department. That's great. And there we all are, chowing down. There we are after drinking and eating. And that's about the end of the party right there. Well, looks like you had a good time. Now, uh, maybe a peek into your apartment, because we've got a few shots of Michael the cat. Tell me about your cat. Oh, Michael the cat, man. My boy. There he is with the scripts. I'll tell you a story about Michael the cat. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Let's see. That's the, I'm, that's my bed I'm on. And in that picture where he's on the table, that's the table right next to me. That's a foot high. <laughs> <laughs> One day I come home and see Michael has no tail. Oh. For some reason, they, they cut the tails off of a lot of kittens. I, I don't know why. It's I think it was fashion. But a lot, most cats didn't have tails for some reason. Look that up on Google. You tell me what it was. <clears throat> I come home one day, and Michael is in the kitchen meowing. So I go to the swinging door. I walk in the kitchen, Michael. He's not in there. So I hear him in the hallway. I go back out. He's not in the hallway. And I hear him, like, in James's room. I go down there, and he's in the ceiling. He's up in the ceiling. <laughs> now, this is creepy stuff. I'm like, how could he get up in the ceiling? And I had a closet. There was a closet that was, it, it, it was a half a closet. And I remember up on top of it, there was a, a slat, a tile, you know, and it was kind of askew. 
I said, well, that's, but to get up there for him was a little kooky to begin with. Anyway, it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. I was like, oh, God, no, I'm freaking out. So I push it open, and a bag falls out. And I get Michael down, and in the bag was a hat that my brother actually has at his house in his basement. Now, in this picture with me and Michael, that's the hat. That's the hat that came out of the ceiling. Too cool. And the cat is still chasing it. There you go. But you know what? I never got the courage to stick my head up in there. <laughs> you know that? There might have been a million yen up there. I, I, I never wanted to stick my head up and look up in there. <laughs> now that is ironic, coming from the man who made Creepy. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was it was too creepy for me. How did he get up in there? And how did the, the how did it close up? It's fantastic. There you go. The concept art. Now, did you think that they matched the art to you or that they matched you to the art? Oh, they matched me to the art. That's why when I walked in that day for the audition, all I had to do was be able to act. That's very cool to see some of this original concept art. And what did you think when you saw the art for your character? Oh, I was blown away. I thought it was Max showed it to me. He says, here, look at this. And he told me. He says, this is, this is how we envision you. <laughs> and I actually, you know, I auditioned for Bodie Lee. And the casting director there, he said, can you be mean? Be mean. Just improvise it. I mean, I went off the wall. And then less than a week later, Leo called me. He said, you booked it. That's awesome. 26 episodes. No, but in the picture we see the photograph of me and Mandar, mm -hmm. that's the day I met Leo, Leo Leonard. That's the picture he took of me. Submit. Very cool. Moving on to uh, a little bit about the costumes. Different actors wearing some pretty elaborate costumes here. Just any thoughts about what you remember, what they were made of, or... Some of these had moving parts, I understand. We're looking at Warrior here. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass from getting into that. I felt bad for that. I even felt bad for Graham. Now, Graham said he, he still has nightmares that. about his costume. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was tough in there, man. It was tough. You know, you could imagine. Like, you take that head off, you can feel the heat coming from, like, a steam pipe. <laughs> it's hot in there, man. All these guys... And he's tripping in there. It's full regalia. Oh it's bug art. That was another one. The guy in there is a little guy, too. How are they able to breathe in those costumes? As best they can. <laughs> and there's... Uh, see, that's when they... Remember we were looking at the, the props? I told you some, the mouth move, the eyes. Yes. So that's them manipulating the eyes and the mouth of Pike. Now, that's interesting. So, whenever there was movement, that was a very controlled movement, it looks like. One of my favorite Pike lines was when they were going to some planet, and he says, Oh, now my... What did he say? It's going gonna, it's gonna to do terrible things for my complexion. Something like that. <laughs> I remember we were all laughing about that line. I think June threw that in. See, that's not in the script. Like, you find those lines, they're not in the script. Well, there's a whole lot of lines that were not in the scripts from what you sent me. It, it's astounding to see, you know, just how much... Uh, was there a lot of ad-libbing on the set? The whole thing. You know, everything. Not everything. But it's like, we're just doing our thing. This is what they want you to say. And we're saying it. That's what, you know, Jim was there for. He was a supervising director to direct the actors. And, and, you know, so a lot of it is all improvised, but that's the story they wanted to tell. We've got the Leon character here, and that poor guy looks very uncomfortable. You're a good guy. He's just making that face. Uh, and then there's that. you. 
Now, I'm curious about this photo here. Was this something that was maybe an official photo for promotion purposes, or did you just happen to get a really cool snapshot? No, that was something they used. I don't know what they used it for. We all had one like that. All right, and on the set, starting out with Bugar next to a pretty young woman here. And who's she? That's her sister. She was the guardian on the set. That was her. Really sweet girl. Had a lot of fun. Very nice. You're saying she was always around. She was kind of the uh, the the den mother for the set, so to speak. Yeah. Well, she was there for uh, Parcival, mm -hmm. his guardian. You know, he needed a, a adult to be on set with him, appointed. Yeah, she was a house mother for all of us. Not really. She just hung out. <laughs> That's all she did. Do you remember her name? I, I don't. No. Well, we've got some great shots here, just in and around the set. Well, let's see. You got them on the sand. That's that's an insert to the whole beach location mm -hmm. that they needed. There's Tyria using a missile or something as a phallic symbol. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> There's partial weight out with his big hunkering machine on his back. Here they are on the sand. There's a smile for you. Now, we have... Some of the sound guys and the stunt people and the translators. So maybe you can pinpoint who did what. Okay. The two guys in, in the middle there were around the fire. Mm -hmm. Those are the sound guys. Let's just hang out, me and the sound guy. That's before that dinner. There's that sweater. Oh, I guess it is. We've got a couple guys There's throwing a the symbol. Yeah, those are the stunt guys. Those are all the stunt guys. Lots of stunts, a lot of flipping in the air. Yeah, all the flips, everything. And his body in the mirror. Mm hmm. Looking at himself. <laughs> Boy, I look good, don't I? Now, that guy at the rap party, I trained with him. He was one of the main fight choreographers, too. Mm hmm. I can't remember his name. I was in touch with him for a long time after I left Japan. Good guy. Me and the stunt girls, big smiles. One next to me on my left is sleeping. <laughs> Everybody gets tired after these productions, I guess. And you're all wearing red. Was. That's cool. You're all color coordinated. Now, the next picture, this I actually wanted to play with them. You know, like do fight for I mean, he came, the guy at ATC, the uh, main stunt coordinator, came in. They were like, nope, got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Catch you later. Yeah, got to go. That's a nice shot. I see that. See the door there? That's yeah. the makeup room right there. That's how small it is. Look at that. Oh. Probably 10 by 10. Mm-hmm. Well, the young lady in the middle, that's one of the translators. Huh. On the beach. And that's that right there. That's the end of the day, too. I think the second day. We're going to leave location. All right. No Laughing Matter. No Laughing Matter was one of the favorite episodes, and you've got a lot of really cool photos from that one. So tell me what's going on behind the scenes of that episode. I see you and Tivia here. Yeah. Well, it was just, uh, you know, again, we were off the blue screen. It was an actual set. So, we are just hanging. Me and Tivia. There's Chris moving around. There's Parcival and his sister in the background. There's Chris with Charlie Chaplin. Now he's sleeping there. <laughs> so, there's another shot. There's another shot where he just sleeps. He was off for a little while there. He was stuck there. And keep in mind, again, it's a whole different story when you're on set. On the blue screen, the light, everything's completely different. So when you get specific shots, it takes a little longer. There's goofing around, wearing the crown. A couple of general yeah. photos here. Just wonder what you remember of these. Got a nice one of Tivia unmasked. Yeah, there's Tivia. Out and about. What she looks like outside of the studio. There I am in my bedroom. My my dog. Still have that dog, too, you know that? Do you? Huh. Yep. He's in New York. A lot of stuff in my brother's basement. Oh, very cool. And there I am holding up the translator. The translator? I All the, right. I took a lot of people up. <laughs> that is a very cool photo. There is one photo I have with, you know, my favorite guy. 
guy that I would mess with all the time. Mm-hmm. Where I actually, I'm, I, I have, I'm going to find these. They got to be somewhere. I'm actually you know, holding him like that, and he's pissed off. And he's in, in the photo. He told me, "Put me down." <laughs> Well, that oh, guy yeah, looks like he's being explored. Oh, they were all sports about it. But he was just working, and they were rushing. I just grabbed him and said, no. And here's, look at that shot of Graham. That was a beautiful shot. That's a fantastic photo. It's cool to see some of these people unmasked. And I'm done with photon. <laughs> all I right. Relived it. I relived it. Let's wrap it fantastic. up. Any final thoughts on this trip down memory lane? None. You just got them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got the best of Amanda out of this. Well, I appreciate hey, you taking you a all. few minutes to go through all of this. Hey, no worries. I enjoyed it. It was a trip. Very cool. So a backstage peek at what really went on during the Photon Television Show. Thanks so much, David. And a uh,